beautiful spring Saturday in Central Florida. We join you from Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida, Disney's wide world of sports. As the Braves and Brandon Phillips battle a division rival, we get our first televised look at the New York Mets here at Champion Stadium. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe, great to be back at the ballpark. Everybody in baseball, Joe, has been raving about this young Braves organization. Well, today, we get to look at a veteran on the mound against New York today. That's right. R.A. Dickey, the knuckleballer, will be one of the guys we get to take a look at. And when you think about the Braves' offseason, it was a season spent on picking up veteran players, older veteran players. And when you look at the uh, credentials of some of these guys, you see a range from Cy Young Awards to all-star appearances, a career ERA of three and a half for Jaime Garcia, Brandon Phillips, gold gloves and all-stars. Uh, Kurt Suzuki will be behind the plate tonight or this afternoon. He's a former all-star. So while in many cases, I think you talk about a club getting older, that doesn't necessarily mean better. In the Braves case, it means much better than they were this time last year so we'll see how it all knuckles out as the Braves take on Terry Collins at his New York Mets first pitch from Disney coming up after a quick timeout Training Baseball is presented by Landmark Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram. Chamber of Commerce weather in Orlando. Good crowd here at Champion Stadium. We'll look at the Braves defensive lineup this afternoon. Kemp, CRT, and Marcakis. No surprises left to right. We'll get a look at Rio Ruiz starting at third base. Jace Peterson at shortstop. Phillips and Freeman on the right side. And Kurt Suzuki has the unenviable task of trying to harness the knuckleball of R.A. Dickey. R.A. Dickey, 14 years in the big leagues. You're going to get a glimpse of it where it started with Texas, where he was a first-round pick out of the University of Tennessee. Moved from there over to Seattle. Spent some time with the Mariners, Minnesota. 
an ERA you'll see is pretty consistent in the fours, but a Cy Young winner, 20 game winner with the Mets. He went to Toronto as a, in, a, in a big deal there after winning the Cy Young Award and has been with them for the last four years. 20 and six with a 273 ERA the year he won the Cy Young Award back in 2012. He also won a gold glove back in 2013 while with Toronto, 110 game winner in his career. And you're right, for Kurt Suzuki, you hope he got his rest last night. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Here in the early going for R.A., his spring numbers have not been real good. 12 earned runs in 15 spring innings, including four earned runs last time out against the Miami Marlins. Ronnie Teague also has a tough task this afternoon. He's got to call balls and strikes with the trick pitch of R.A. Dickey. As Juan Lagares is the Mets leadoff hitter. found the mark and a count of two and one one thing you'll notice about R.A. is that he doesn't mess around he gets the ball back and he throws it and his knuckleball is thrown harder than most <laughs> these have ranged from 78 to 82 miles an hour just missed and the count runs to three and two. Look, Harris will be an extra outfielder for the Mets this year. Their outfield pretty much set. As Ruiz gives ground third, can't corral it. It's headed for the corner. And Lagaris on his way to second base. He makes the turn, heads toward third. And it's a leadoff triple for Juan Lagaris. One of the things that's plagued R.A. Dickey this spring, and I realize he's been knocked around a little bit, but seven unearned runs. So he hasn't had very good defense played behind him at all in his starts down here in spring training, and that was not a very good play by Ruiz, who, as you said, Chip gave ground on that hopper. They'll rule it a triple. That'll bring up Ty Kelly. Kelly playing second base today. From Suzuki and the Mets score on a gift here in the top of the first. What the knuckleball giveth, it also sometimes taketh away. And Kurt Suzuki has never caught a knuckleballer before. This is something that has been a work in progress this spring for him, too. So one nothing New York. Ty Kelly, switch hitter, takes called strike. Ty Kelly also played in the WBC for Team Israel, so he was away from the Mets camp. And now two and two. Walker figures to be the everyday second baseman for the Mets who on paper at least partner looked to have a very powerfully built lineup a lot of power not much speed and Dickey takes care of Kelly a swinging strike one out you'll also notice we talk there's a lot of talk these days about catchers and their ability to frame who's who's the best framer of pitches in baseball there's not any framing going on. Just catch it if you're Kurt Suzuki. Here's Michael Conforto, the Mets right fielder. He's had a terrific spring. But as I said, with their outfield set, Joe, it looks like Conforto's not going to have a place to play. He's having a great spring, too. Numbers there 327, two homers. Certainly not going to send him back to Triple A Las Vegas again. He hit like 400 there when he was down for a while last year. Just try to try, we'll try to find him some at bat somewhere. High fly ball belted deep right field, 
And that one a uh, no doubter. It's 2 0 New York. Told you the Mets have plenty of power in Conforto's third. A no doubter over the 385 sign. When they have Cespedes, Granderson, and Jay Bruce in their outfield, it's it's hard to squeeze a guy in unless he's hitting like Conforto's hitting right now. Lucas Duda, who when he's healthy, he can hit 20 home runs or more for you. And a quick two run first. RA will take care of Wilmer Flores for the second out. So base is empty. TJ Rivera won the Pacific Coast League batting title last year. Las Vegas. Rivera's playing left. And he was on Team Puerto Rico in the World Baseball Classic. <laughs> Mets 12 and 16 so far in the spring. The Braves are 7 and 19. Speared by Dickey right off the end of the bat. And TJ Rivera and the Mets are done after a two run top of the first. Home isn't just a play. Mets strike with two of the first. Here's the Braves lineup as presented by manager Brian Snitker today. Ender Inciarte will lead off. Brandon Phillips bats in plays second. Freddie Freeman's had a great spring. Kemp Marcakis, then Suzuki, Rio Ruiz, Jace Peterson eighth, and R.A. Dickey ninth. And Rafael Montero on the mound for the Mets. His first start of the spring. He's had a good spring, low ERA. Braves have seen him work out of the bullpen with the big club in the past. That's probably where he will be this year since their rotation is all but set, provided they're all healthy. Braves will see Noah Syndergaard open day in New York. So Rafael Montero begins his day with pitch up and away. Ball one for NCRT. And their second game in the Braves starting lineup since coming back from Team Venezuela in the WBC. Try this foul away for an even count. Catcher today for the Mets, Rene Rivera, has primarily been a backup for New York the last couple of years. But Terry Collins said yesterday or the day before that he likely will be the starting catcher opening day because of his ability to control the running game of opponents. To second. 
Bender is retired on a ground ball out. That's how the bottom of the first starts. Ty Kelly with an easy pick. Here's Brandon Phillips. You had the line of the morning earlier today when you said, nice TV debut for Brandon Phillips. Yes, two days ago. Yeah, how about that? Already a highlight reel. He and Dansby Swanson were outstanding up the middle. Brandon's hitting 286 in the spring. He's ready to go. And ball one. Fastball. Terrell throws in the low 90s. He's got a hard sinker and a slider, but as Terry Collins told us today, he's got to work both sides of the plate. Mets to an 87 75 record last year. Rather remarkable accomplishment when you consider all the injuries they had to fight through in 2016. And as good as the Mets rotation was and appears to be on paper, remember they still used 12 different men to start games last year. Behind first, Garris, excuse me, Wilmer Flores makes a nice play. Reaching over the tarp, Wilmer Flores takes care of Brandon Phillips. Nice play. He's as valuable as just about anybody on their ball club. You play anywhere on the field, solid hitter with some power. So Montero gets some defensive help two up two down for a scorching Freddie Freeman. He had the at bat of the game against the Tigers a couple of days ago. Jumps all over that pitch and rifles it toward right. And Freeman's got another hit. Keep wondering if certain people are ready to go to start the season. This is one guy you don't have to worry about. Man, is he swinging? You watch him in BP and batting practice, and he's hitting the ball hard all over the ballpark. He's ready to go. This would be a good spot for Matt Kemp's first spring homer. That's knocked in eight. Two nothing Mets. Squib foul pass, Eddie Perez. And the count of ball into strike. The other night we showed you a graphic about how the Braves offense was so dramatically improved after the trade deadline because of the acquisition of Matt Kemp and the lengthening and deepening of the Braves starting eight. This is a Braves team that really struggled to score as many as four runs a game on average. After July 31st, Braves scored on average over five runs a game. You take that going into opening day, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Take that all year long. There are those matchups with April and May, June and July. No real comparison. Needless to say, the long ball played a part in that, too. One and two for Matt. First. Well, with that acquisition of Matt Kemp, you look at the Braves' record after the All-Star break. After a 9-28 start, 
of the season. The Braves went 37 and 35 after the break. But a lot of people around baseball didn't know that. And won 12 of their last 14 games. So if your goal is to finish strong, the Braves certainly did that. And that's, Joe, why I think there was so much optimism and excitement coming into spring training. Well, Brian Snicker has said as much, hoping to build off what they did. And with the addition of these veterans that we highlighted in our opening comments, no reason to think that they won't be able to build on that. Full count pitch. Freeman will get a head start with two outs. There he goes. And the inning is over. After one, Mets have jumped in front to nothing. There's a bigger glove. Um, obviously, you need a bigger glove when you catch a ball moving that much, but I think it's the relaxing part. I think when you tend to catch enough ball, sometimes you kind of tense up and get a little nervous, but you guys try, try to do your best. They said the more you relax, the, the better it'll come to you. I'm excited for it. You know, I've never caught one. You know, check it off the list, and uh, to be able to catch a guy as successful as he's been, you know, uh, it dances up there pretty good, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> that might be the first catcher in baseball history that's ever said, oh, it's relaxing trying to catch a knuckleball. <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that before. Rio at third on a one hopper. And Philip Evans is retired. It's relaxing because the pitcher's never going to shake you off. There's, I don't know if you even put any signs down. You just sit back there and play defense. But there are a million quotes on knuckleballs. I mean, everybody's got their theories, you know, catching a... a a mosquito with chopsticks, all that stuff. Uh, you remember Ron Luciano, the umpire? No, yeah, I do. He said, not only can't pitchers control a knuckleball, hitters can't hit it, catchers can't catch it, coaches can't coach it, most pitchers can't learn it. It's the perfect pitch. <laughs> <laughs> and out of play. But really, it's the knuckleball that has saved the career of, of R.A. Dickey. You mentioned he was a number one draft pick out of Tennessee. And was all set to sign a, a big first round bonus check when he went in for his post draft physical. They found that he was born without the Tommy John ligament in his elbow. Right. And as a result, the Texas Rangers who drafted him changed the signing bonus. And R.A. just kind of made his way through professional baseball as just a guy. And I mean that without disrespect. As this one's. Ripped toward left and it hangs up for Matt Kemp. Rene Rivera hit it hard. But before the 2006 season, John Hart and R.A. Dickey, while with the Texas Rangers, said, all right, go back to the minors and become a knuckleball pitcher. And as they say, the rest is history. Add to that that growing up in Tennessee, he was a huge Braves fan. So when the opportunity came along this year to sign with Atlanta, he was one of the first guys in line is really looking forward to this season hoping to have a lot of success with the team that he grew up loving. This is Luis Guillaume and he 
pops that one toward Ender in right center, and R.A. cruises through a 1-2-3 second inning. Nick Markick is coming up for Atlanta. It's 2-0 Nets. Atlanta Braves Spring Training Baseball is brought to you by Landmark Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, and SunTrust. Joe and Chip with our Fox Sports crew from Orlando. 2-0 New York, our second spring training telecast. We'll join you again here Monday night when the Braves face the Tigers again. Nick Marcakis, Kurt Suzuki, Rio Ruiz are coming up against Rafael Montero. And that one slapped into left field. Second Braves hit, a leadoff single for Marcakis. Same old Nick. Using the whole field, hit it where it's pitched. Came in hitting 275 for the spring. I think his average last year was 269. I'm going to lay money on him hitting well above that this year. 269, 161 hits. And Nick played in every game but four last year for the Braves. So here's Suzuki. Originally in Oakland A. Then went to the Nationals. Back to Oakland. Last year with Minnesota. <laughs> I asked him today about playing for Paul Molitor, the Hall of Famer in Minnesota, the last couple of years, and he said he was terrific, you know, very mild mannered, low key. And I said, yeah, but I'll bet when he did raise his voice, everybody listened. And he said, absolutely, they did, because they knew that it was it was real when he did that. And I think the same can be said about Brian Snitker. Things go along just swell until you do something to really aggravate him. And then when he does raise his voice, you know it means something. Still a few decisions for Brian Snitker and his staff to make in the final days of spring training. Talk about that after the one two pitch to Kurt Suzuki which is down and in a couple of bullpen spots still up for grabs and the Braves bench I think it's safe to say is still a work in progress. Atlanta's already announced their starting rotation for the first five games of the year. This one's bounced towards short. There's one. And Suzuki's doubled up, two out.
Braves did in some way help clarify the bullpen situation today. Blaine Boyer was released today. Yeah, and was saddened to hear that. Yeah, and I guess in a way for Blaine, it's bittersweet. Bitter that he wasn't going to make this team, but sweet in that he now has a week to perhaps hook up with somebody else. Yeah, that's that's really a, a favor if they were not going to keep him to do it now so that he has a chance to go to another club. And he got off to a very slow start this spring, but his last three or four outings have been shut out baseball and he pitched well. So we hope Lane can catch on somewhere before opening day. And the other issue in the bullpen is Mauricio Cabrera's elbows a little tender. The Braves don't think it's serious, but they're going to be monitoring that over the next couple of days. Fly ball to right off the bat of Rio Ruiz and Montero has no trouble with Atlanta in the second inning. Time for inning number three. R.A. Dickey is going to face Montero, Lagaris, and Ty Kelly, trailing 2 0. Leadoff triple, a strikeout, ball in the dirt, and then a home run for New York in the opening inning. A lot of Mets fans made the trek from Port St. Lucie this afternoon. They start that really aggravating let's go Mets trip. <laughs> Very annoying. Yeah. This Mets ball club finished strong last year to get into the postseason. They were one of the wild card teams and played one of the classic greatest wild card games ever. And they hooked up with the San Francisco Giants and Madison Bumgarner. Scoreless game to the ninth. Nice play, Freddie. And he leads RA perfectly. One out. Bumgarner and Syndergaard had hooked up in a scoreless battle. And then Connor Gillespie hit a three run homer off of Curious Familia in the ninth inning. And that was the game, 3 0. Everybody in Vegas had Connor Gillespie with a game winning hit. Exactly. Right? Yeah. What a great game, though. And here is Lagaris again. He tripled down the left field line. How do you like the Mets in the East this year? I would presume to say that on paper, the two best teams in the division are the Nationals and this New York club. Absolutely, they are on paper. I like this Mets team a lot. I like their lineup a lot. Uh, I think they have an excellent chance of unseating Washington for the National League East, but it comes with a an asterisk, meaning they've got to keep their rotation together. They've got to keep everybody healthy. And if they do, what a rotation. Syndergaard, Mats, DeGrom, Harvey, and then a trio to choose from. 
Zach Wheeler Robert Kesselman and Seth Lugo the latter two we saw last year and we were really impressed with those two kids pitching against the Braves yeah and Lugo's even got longer hair than DeGrom Kesselman has longer hair than DeGrom that gives him some advantage <laughs> Lugo <laughs> oh. Oh. Lugo uh, pitched the championship game for the World Baseball Classic for Puerto Rico and pitched well that was a good pitch. Full count. And that asterisk you talked about with the Mets, not just with regards to their starting rotation, they do have some question marks going into opening day. This one's dumped behind first and just foul. I mean, just foul. Let's start with question number one. Who's going to close games for New York in the first, well, 15 days, 30 days? Who knows? Because Juris Familia has some suspension issues perhaps to deal with because of a domestic violence incident in the offseason. Yeah, that apparently is going to probably come down. The decision on that, the suspension, uh, if there is one, is going to come this week. So Addison Reed, I think, is the guy who's going to inherit that role. Rio at third. A perfect throw. Two outs. And then the other big question I have, and I'm hoping for baseball, that David Wright can come back. He has had all kinds of neck and shoulder problems. Yeah, and that's very iffy. He hasn't thrown a baseball since the first week of spring. You see those numbers from last year. Uh, a lot of power, solid pitching numbers. Even with all their injuries. Spent some money to bring Cespedes back. And according to Terry Collins, Cespedes has come back in great shape, working hard, playing hard, and ready to prove he's worth the money. Two quick strikes for Ty Kelly, who struck out his first time up. And this one's popped up right in front of the Mets bench. Play. Well, through all of that, last year the Mets being a playoff club, they really had to work hard to fight off the Braves last year. Team split almost perfectly split the 19 games head to head last season. Call it was a three game sweep by the Braves in New York in September that was such a big emotional stretch of play. One of the best plays of the year, highlighted by the Ender Inciarte catch of Cespedes' drive off Jim Johnson in the ninth inning. Game saver. Braves won seven out of nine games in New York last year. And they'd love to continue that work. Because two of our three trips against the Mets come in the month of April this year. It's a little weird. What a quirk that is. And don't go back to New York till September. Weird. Two and two for Ty Kelly. Got a fastball and he didn't miss it. So Kelly's at first. A two out hit in front of Michael Conforto who Get a long homer his first time up. Have you ever met the schedule makers? I have not. Well, neither have I. Here's that home run by Conforto, and it was one that even Nick Marcakis just admired. He's no doubter. No, I would, I've never met him either, and I'm sure they're sharp people, nice people. I often wonder if they're cross-eyed. <laughs> I wonder if they. How often they change the darts from dartboard when they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's our understanding there's going to be a new schedule maker in time for the 2018 season. Yeah. It'll be more adaptable for big matchups and weekends for TV. So some of those weird seeing the Mets twice in New York in one month probably won't be happening anymore. Now if we could just get rid of the two and two home and home yeah. series thing I'd be good to go. Out of play. Yeah 
still haven't figured out how Atlanta and Toronto became annual natural rivals. I don't get that one. These two uh, veteran pitchers the Braves signed, Dickey and Colon, may surprise you in what good defensive players they are. Dickey, as I said, has won a gold glove in his career. They're very active, very agile. And the knuckler takes care of Michael Conforto. Dickey has his second strikeout. He'll bat second in the home third next. Nothing New York. Both runs in the first inning. Chase Peterson, R.A. Dickey, and Ender Inciarte are coming up for the Braves. Rafael Montero continues his good work. He's faced seven in the first two innings with a strikeout and a double play. We talked about Chase. A couple of nights ago, and how he and Chase Darno are going to be counted on heavily off the Braves bench. Fly ball to right. And Conforto sent to the running track. And that ball was certainly struck well by Chase, but neither guy is really distinguishing himself down the stretch here um, offensively to make. Brian Snicker feel comfortable and I, I'm putting those words in Brian's mouth. He didn't say that to me but you'd sure like to see those guys swing a little better given how many at bats though they have gotten this spring and the importance of those bench players is self evident as it stands now the Braves are thinking about carrying eight relief pitchers which means they're going to have four extra men available in reserve. One of those men will be whoever's not catching that game. So in essence you're going to go into every game with a three man bench right. And so that really is going to make things difficult for Brian Snitker as far as pinch hitting options in the middle innings of the ball game. So much so that he said, hey, we may have to use one of our starting pitchers right as a pinch hitter to get us through the middle innings. And I need to say, too, in defense of Chase Darno, he spent some time on the, in sick bay. He had bad bronchitis, wasn't feeling well for uh, a good week. So that's why I said earlier that figuring out how the bench will be composed is still on the to-do list for John Coppolella and the rest of the Braves staff here in the final week plus of spring. Ender grounded out second his first time up. We're at the stage of spring where 
regular guys are going to start getting three four at bats per game especially in the case of Inciarte who was away with the WBC. Second half explosion for Atlanta. To center. John Mora just checked in and he's and tested with a soft fly ball that ends Atlanta's third inning. Tuesdays on Fox Sports Southeast beginning April 4th. That catch was September 21st. The Braves beat the Mets 4-3. to three. That was in the middle of a seven-game Atlanta win streak in the middle days of September last year. And that was such a stunning loss for the Mets because they were fighting tooth and nail to, right. to stay in the playoff race. It was just he had to go so far and time his jump perfectly to reel that in. Brilliant play. And a gold glove season last year for Atlanta's Ender NCRT. He stole 16 bases. We talked about this a couple of nights ago, too. I mentioned that I expect him, I look for him to steal 20, 25 maybe this year. And he got caught stealing seven times. Ron Washington is the base running coach now. And talking to him before the game. We know that he's been out early with these guys working on infield work. Well, he's been working a lot, talking to Lagaris a lot about stealing bases and about when to go, what to watch for, you know, picking up some of the nuances that might help him. So another piece of experience from Ron Washington to impart to some of these players that'll help them in the long run. Third strikeout for Dickey. So much of a base stealer's success is predicated on what the, in the case of NCRT is the leadoff man, what the number two hitter does. The Braves feel very confident, I'm sure, that Dansby Swanson can handle the responsibilities of being a two-hole hitter. And he'll have a full season, not just a little more than a month, to work in tandem with NCRT, one and two in the batting card. One of the disadvantages of that for a young player like Dansby is taking pitches. You know, if you've got a guy who's been able to steal some bases, get into scoring position, you got to give him a chance to go. So there might be some pitches early in the count you take that you would ordinarily swing at. That's hard on a young guy. A little 
will pop. Brandon Phillips drifts out, but Marcakis is there. And he puts that away for the second out. TJ Rivera retired, and Phillip Evans, the next third baseman, is coming up. Calling all kids, your Atlanta Braves are having a special opening day just for you on Sunday, April 16th. There will be special activities and prizes just for kids and the first chance to run the bases at SunTrust Park after the game. Go to Braves.com slash tickets today for more details. Have you heard about the zip line? Uh, yeah, I, I have. Bobbled, but no trouble. Evans retired. I don't know what the weight standard is on that thing, but I hope we'll be able to try it out. Ain't no we involved. <laughs> Pretty smooth, man. See, I watched him play in Cincinnati. I say that guy, look, he play, he plays the game easy. It's like it's slow, you know. That's what it's, the good ones do. The good ones, slow it's, it's, down, he right? slows it down. The good ones slow it down. And I remember I told him, guy, when he comes to the plate, he scares the heck out of you because uh, he whips that bat around. It's like, man. Yeah, the ball he gets back to him. Another exciting acquisition for the Braves, Brandon Phillips, who, as we said two nights ago, put out. A tremendous defensive game. Great over the shoulder catch. And I, I still am shaking my head at his double play that he started with Dansby Swanson. The stab and then a behind the back perfect feed to start the double play. Yeah, that was fun to watch. And it just in keeping with what we said about him. Uh, the quote from one of our friends in Cincinnati who's watched him play. Called him the ultimate gamer. And the fans love him. Lead off hit starts the Braves fourth. Good offensive day for Brandon Phillips. Good defensive night two nights ago. Here's that play. There's one of the double plays. Here's the over the shoulder catch. Knowing that Dick Marquez was right there. Here's behind the back. Lovely. That was fun. And you say, well, it was spring training. No. You'll see one or two of those this summer, I'm sure. And it looks like he and Dansby are made to play with each other. Very easy adjustment for the Braves shortstop. And not surprising, Brandon Phillips, a gold glover. Anybody would want to play next to one of those guys. You bet. Another day, another hit for Freddie Freeman. He's got a first inning single. And that missed low. Two balls, no strikes. What? 
Friday would be the first to tell you that the first weeks of the season were almost lost offensively for him. But did you know he finished with a 302 batting average? Highest batting average since the 2013 season for him. 30 home runs for the first time in his career. And he finished with 91 runs batted in. 89 walks, too. His on base percentage, a perfect 400. And I imagine you'll be seeing teams pitch him just like that. But if you do, then you have to mess with Matt Kemp. Yeah, I, I would think if you ask John Coppolella or Brian Snicker or any of the executives with the Braves, uh, do you expect Freddie to add to his numbers this year? Naturally, the answer is going to be, yeah, we hope so. But you just take Freddie being Freddie. More the same. First great scoring chance for the Braves. Two on, nobody out. And it sounds to maybe the casual fan like it's not a big deal, but how big a deal was getting Matt Kemp for Freddie Freeman? What did that production mean for him at bat to at bat? Numbers kind of spell it out, don't they? Uh-huh. A shot to the left side. And around the horn, double play. Two of those turned by the Mets defense. Phillips to third, but now there are two outs. A nice play there by Phillip Evans at third base. That was a quick release to get that double play started. Got a good hop, too, but quick release, perfect feed. Jose Reyes will be the starting third baseman for the Mets. As Drupal Cabrera will be the shortstop. Neil Walker and Lucas Duda figure to play on the right side of the Mets infield. Rivera and Travis Darno will be the Mets catchers. Downstairs from Arcacus, one ball, no strikes. One of the th interesting quirks about uh, a player who's about to become a free agent is that teams, in order to get compensation back if that player signs with another team, they have to tender them a qualifying offer. If they don't do the qualifying offer, they get no compensation. So then the player has to decide, am I going to go ahead and go out on the free agent market and see what I can get? Or in this case, this offseason, the qualifying offer was $17 plus million plus for a one-year deal. And for Neil Walker, that was a no-brainer. Hmm. <laughs> I'll take the qualifying offer. Yeah. To second. Tricky hop. But Marquecas and the Braves are out of luck. Good pitching by Montero. Two on, nobody out. Three outs with two ground balls, and he still leads two zip.
R.A. Dickey surrendered two in the first. He's pitched a great sense, and he's got the bottom of the order coming up. Rivera, Guillaume, the pitcher spot. And then Mora. Again, Juan Lagares left the game after the third inning today. We're told he has a left oblique strain. That guy just can't stay healthy, can he? He cannot. Bad time of spring for that. Bad time, any time. Yeah, 60 pitches now for R.A. Dickey. And we're in the fifth. So he's on a good pace and you say well does a knuckleballer ever get tired well maybe not Tim Wakefield didn't a few years ago what did he pitch on two days rest or something uh -huh. and R.A. has said as much when he talks about the knuckleball and its effect on the arm as Rio backs up at third. And Freddie digs it out. Dickey has said that his arm really doesn't get tired. He said a knuckleball pitch and a knuckleball pitcher. He said it's like dog ears in reverse. He said, I may be 40 something years old, but I really feel like I'm 26 or 27. Uh, it makes two of us. <laughs> R.A. is a very well-spoken, thoughtful man. He's a published author. He's written three books. And not surprisingly, he was an English literature major at Tennessee. How about that? Is he one of the guys that climbed Kilimanjaro uh -huh. a few years ago? Yeah. He was. to Guillaume. Three balls, no strikes. <laughs> the Mets shortstop flying out to center his first time up. And he takes ball four. Guillaume's got terrific hands. In fact, some publications said he may be the best defensive infielder coming up in their system and he showed off those great hands earlier this spring. The Mets were playing the Miami Marlins and Guillaume was standing on the top step of the dugout and he saved one of his teammates almost certain injury as he just got picked off. Like I said these pitchers they can feel their position they can Take care of business here when they need to. Perfect throw. So that's the second out of the inning. But Adania Echeverria was up in a game against the Mets. Swung and missed. The bat went pinwheeling toward the New York dugout, and Guillaume didn't even move. He just stuck his hand out and caught the bat like uh, somebody throwing a baton. Well, what I, and it's an incredible play. We'll show it when we get a second. But he comes from a long line, the Guillaume family of uh, you know jugglers that you know oh, really you know, throw the. I, I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. And Montero with a two-out hit stands at first. Take a look. No problem. I mean, he I didn't even move. Yeah, I got it. Didn't even duck. And easy. And no, the bat obviously didn't have a lot of pine tar. Otherwise, Pitcher Faria wouldn't have lost in the first place. Mm -hmm. So John Mora, the batter, his first appearance of the game at the plate. Remember, Juan Lagares, an oblique problem. Don't know how or when Juan hurt that today. The Mets have a very crowded outfield situation with Cespedes, with Curtis Granderson, who's going to play center field for them. The Mets have had two players in their 
franchise's history. Play 35 games or more at the age of 36 or more. Anderson's, I think, 39 years old. Brett Butler was one of those two players. Willie Mays was the other. Wow. So Curtis Granderson will try to join that group. And he had a great line when somebody asked him about playing center field every day at City Field. He said, I'm no Kelly Leak out there. <laughs> no few bad news bears. <laughs> so well, Curtis was a terrific center fielder in his younger days with the Tigers. A little dribbler, that's tough play. Brandon behind the back and not in time. Almost pulled off another beauty, but an infield hit with two outs. Tossed it from where he caught it rather than come back around to the front. Almost. So a chance for Ty Kelly, who struck out and singled. <laughs> You look up the word persistence, you see the face of Ty Kelly. 855 minor league games over eight years before he got his first taste of the major leagues, and that came last May. Well, something else. I mean, when your name is Kelly and you're playing for Team Israel, you got something else going for you there, too. <laughs> Good point. One ball, one strike. Suzuki smothered that. After the first inning, Kurtz looked pretty comfortable back there, don't you think? Yeah, he just made a nice stop on a ball in the dirt uh, with Montero at first. Kept him over there. I'm sure we'll run into Bruce Benedict a time or two this summer. Bruce, a terrific scout. Caught Phil Negro at his knuckleball a lot. Bruce's observations on what the secret is, if there is one. Other than Bob Euchre's magic Euchre. recipe, which was just wait for it to stop rolling, pick it up, and throw it back to the pitcher. Which is, sounds good to me. <laughs> A little squibber. Dickey. Off balance throw. Fell to the turf, but made the play. So R.A. Dickey with a nice play to pitch himself out of fifth inning trouble. It's still two zip New York. Opener in regular season play will be April 14th against the Padres. 41,500 seats. The 108,000 square foot canopy extending 60 feet over the seats will provide fans protection from the sun and the rain. It'll be the most technologically advanced stadium in the country. 
as soon as you pull into the parking garage, you will be instantly connected to Wi-Fi. That's cool. At SunTrust Park. I don't think they thought of that at Fenway when they built that one. Nope. They weren't concerned with it too much. Nope. Nope. And, of course, the Battery Atlanta, the oh! Live Work Play Development. And the Battery will be open for business 365 days a year. Uh, and that's what I just keep saying, come early, stay late. It's just a place to come and meet friends and family uh, before the game. A little pop by Suzuki, and that'll drop into shallow left field, and Kurt's aboard with his first hit of the day. Take your pick of great places to eat or have a... Uh, a beverage of your choice before the game, before coming into the game. And uh, afterwards, if you want to stick around and let traffic clear a little bit before you head home, likewise, get something to eat, meet with your friends, talk about the game. It's just going to be a, a one-stop place for everything. It's just going to be a great deal of fun. We'll get our first look at SunTrust Park on the 31st. Braves will be playing the Yankees. That game will be open for A-list members, season ticket holders. We will be broadcasting the game for you on Fox. And for those of you making your way to SunTrust Park for that game on the 31st, don't miss our welcome home special. We'll take an inside look at SunTrust Park. With our Fox Sports crew, Paul Bird's going to join us, Kelsey Wingert. You and I will have some vignettes, as it were, to let people know about comings and goings and things to see and do, not only in SunTrust Park, but the Battery. And we'll be joined by John Sherholtz, Derek Schiller, Mike Plant, and Terry McGurk. The respective heads of the Braves organization to get their thoughts on the new home of the Braves. And let's face it, it's all new to us. Uh, as we go along, we're going to be learning more and more about some of the great things at the ballpark and great places to watch a game from and and how to enjoy it. So that will be a big part of that. From a player's perspective, we're used to going every third or fourth day to a new ballpark and all the idios idiosyncrasies of a new stadium. As the home team not knowing what your park will play like, how difficult a challenge will that be for the Braves in the early days of regular season play, you think? The biggest part of that, I think, is getting a feel for how the infield plays. Okay. The dirt, is it fast? Is the grass fast? Is it slow? How smooth is it? Those types of things. Outfield-wise, it is just taking a, a photo shot of it for your brain, knowing where the corners and the nooks and crannies might be. In right field, there's a higher wall out at the chop house. So that's something for Nick Markakis to get some fly balls hit off the wall to see how that plays. And, and I think that's the gist of it is knowing your surroundings, how much foul territory is there for the first and third baseman for the left and right fielder. How about the sun for the outfielders? That'll be different. Ballpark faces a different way than turn the field. So that will be, I don't want to say a test, that'll just be um, something you adjust to find out if it's a problem it shouldn't the sun actually should be uh, behind the fielders if you will or behind right field and even for day games but ground ball of that of Jace Peterson and not in time Jace beats the rapid first base on a close play two outs so I think will have another at bat two outs here in the fifth inning. So yeah we're excited. We'll see the San Diego Padres to open up regular season play on the 14th. Padres are in for four games. The Nationals come in for three and then the Braves go back out on the road again. In fact the Braves are only home seven games in April. That'll let everybody work out the things that need to be worked yep. out in the new facility. The benefit of that is June and August and September, the Braves are home a lot. That's a good thing. Only 10 road games in the month of June. Slapped toward the seat tonight by R.A. Dickey. And he's behind 0-2. We'll get our first look at the Mets in Atlanta. May 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Then the Cardinals come in for a three-game series. 
Then Toronto, Washington, and Pittsburgh. That wraps up the home schedule for the Braves in May. Tapper back to Montero, who has pitched a beauty. This is supposed to be Jacob DeGrom's turn to pitch in rotation. He's pitching back at Port St. Lucie. So far, Montero has not made the Mets miss him. Home isn't just a place. Atlanta Braves Spring Training Baseball is brought to you by Yellowwood and GMC. Not only have the Braves added a few new players to their roster for 2017, they've added two new coaches. Chuck Hernandez is the new pitching coach. And Ron Washington, longtime Major League third base and infield coach, former big league manager, is the Braves' third base coach this season. And Great pickup. Great, great uh, collection of coaches on this staff. Bo Porter, the third base coach for the Braves in recent years, has been promoted upstairs assistant to the general manager. Michael Conforto just keeps on hitting. That's yeah. his second safety of the game. Just say Michael Conforto can hit. Yeah. By the way, a little known record being set at the ballpark today. We have set a new major league mark for former Albuquerque Dukes. <laughs> at, st at, st at stadium today, yeah. huh. you have not one but two former teammates in uniform today. Yeah, one's a manager and one's a former manager and third base coach. <laughs> Ron Washington and Terry Collins and I played together. Wasn't a bad team. Wilmer Flores takes outside one ball one strike tell us a little about Ron Washington you know him from obviously your playing days but all your days in the American League as well he's aggressive he expects you to play aggressively uh, no holding back there's uh, you know don't don't give excuses just get better do it better the next time and he was talking about some of the guys he's been working with and he mentioned Ozzie Albies is one early in camp that you tell him something once you don't have to tell him again. And he likes that a lot when players may make a mistake but they don't make it repeatedly. That's something he likes. But he is certainly vocal. Sharply hit to left by Flores. Back to back hits for the Mets here in the sixth. He'll be the first, Ron will be the first to pat you on the back and brag on you, but he'll also be one of the first guys to say, what was that? What were you thinking there? <laughs> I haven't been around Ron nearly as long as you, but you were talking with Terry Collins, and Terry asked if Ron was going to be making the bus trip down to Port St. Lucie tomorrow when these teams hook up again, and Ron said very simply, if the bus is moving, I'm going to be on it. Yep, <laughs> and that's been the case all spring. T.J. Rivera. Oh, 
Got to play foul. Braves bullpen starts to work. As R.A. Dickey approaching 90 pitches, it's Kevin Chapman, a left-hander, who's making a late bid to pitch his way into the Braves bullpen. Up the middle. Should be two. It is. Nicely turned. Just what the doctor ordered for R.A. Dickey. Nice looking play by Jace Peterson. The second baseman turned all utility. Well done, Jace. I should note, too, and I don't want to dwell on the old days that much, but uh, the manager we had on that team that year was Del Crandall. And Terry Collins, manager of the Mets, obviously, will tell you he learned a lot from Dell as his player coach. Oh, the Braves, Braves Hall of Fame, of course. For Philip Evans. Evans, a couple of ground outs. Dickey trying to pitch out of a little jam here in the sixth. And a fly ball deep center. That'll stay in the park. Ender puts it away, and R.A. Dickey, maybe his best start of the spring. He's down two runs, but the top of the order for Atlanta's coming up. Now to secure your seats for your favorite theme nights and gate giveaways during the inaugural season at SunTrust Park. You don't want to miss Star Wars Night, Bartolo Cologne Bobblehead Night, and many, many more promotions. Go to Braves.com slash promotions for more details. Mets two, Braves nothing. Both New York runs came in the first inning. A triple, a wild pitch, and a home run. And with this game moving to the home sixth, Terry Collins is making a few changes. L.J. Mazzilli. A familiar name checks in at third base and Hansel Robles who had a good year for New York and relief is on to pitch. Yeah, he was in a lot of ball games 68 as you see a lot of strikeouts very low batting average against him by left handers. He'll be counted on heavily in the absence of uh, Juris Familia if he is going to be away for any length of time Robles certainly be one of the stalwarts in a setup role. That's got to be tough for Terry Collins to manage that New York pitching staff in this regard. And I would assume it's maybe the way things were for the Braves when they had the big three. If DeGrom and Syndergaard and Mats and Harvey are going seven innings every night, how do you keep those relief guys sharp and not allow them to rust with too much rest because their starters are so effective? Man, oh man, can, this day and age, you imagine what a luxury it is to have starters that go that deep into a ball game on a consistent basis. The other side of that is they can ill afford 
to push those guys at the risk of maybe hurting them or re-injuring something. So they're going to, you know, they're going to be very careful on pitch counts. NCRT leads off for the Braves, who have four hits so far in the day. Rafael Montero, very impressive, wouldn't you say? You bet. Five innings of four hit shutout ball. <laughs> oh! Well hit towards center. Uh, that'll be tracked down by Mora. And there's the first out. Not going to go anywhere into that win today. Well hit, though, by Ender. And here's Brandon Phillips. Brandon's 35 years young. He'll turn 36 in late June. Three-time All-Star. He's working on a few milestones this year. Brandon Phillips is trying to become only the fifth player in big league history to do as a second baseman. The following 2,000 hits, 200 homers, and 200 stolen bases. He's 146 hits away from 2,000. He's six homers away from 200, and two steals away from 200. The only other players who have done that are Robbie Alomar, Craig Biggio, Joe Morgan, and Ryan Sandberg. They all have a Hall of Fame ring to them. Brandon's led National League second baseman in fielding percentage three times. In fact, in 2014, he made just two errors. Two. And had a stretch of 107 games in a row without a fielding mistake. And was part of one of the great deals in baseball history. Brandon Phillips was acquired by the Indians in 2002 with Lee Stevens, Cliff Lee, and Grady Sizemore for Bartolo Colon, Cash, and Tim Drew. Advantage, Indians. I told Brandon when I introduced myself to him a couple of days ago that I said I was at Turner Field working the night that you were at Turner Field sitting in the box seats behind the on-deck circle after having just been drafted in the second round by the Expos. Felipe Alou, the manager, and you were sitting down there watching your new team. Little pop. And it drops in front of Moore. He said, yeah, that was a good night. So Brandon Phillips day is done. He'll leave with a couple of hits. Chase Darno is going to check in for him here in the home sixth. Freddie's reached twice infield hitting a walk. And he'll <laughs> face down the man that's worn 47 in New York better than anybody else in team history. Hansel Robles. Got that right. But speaking of others who have worn 47, isn't it old number 47's birthday today? It is. I say old. Yeah, Tom Glavin is celebrating his 65th birthday today. Hard to believe. That's driven hard toward left. But the wind's going to knock that down. No back to first. Freeman gave it a ride, but he's the second out. Yeah, I think it's safe to say we're talking about dog years in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think for Tommy, it's dog years fast forward because he has to work with us so many games. Right. So, Tommy, happy birthday. Yep, Medicare is no fun. <laughs> Matt Kim's coming up. Matt struck out and hit into a double play.
Mets have an odd scheduling quirk. We talked about how they'll see the Braves in New York twice in the month of April. It's my understanding that every single game the Mets play in the season's first month is against the National League East. Every single one of them. So if they get off to a good start, they could really set the pace in the division race. I like that. I, I wish there was a way that everybody could play in their own division early on and late. Conversely, the Braves have games against the Pirates, the Padres, and we make our lone trip to Milwaukee at the end of April. So the Braves take care of Pittsburgh and Milwaukee in the season's first month. Rush that fastball up there, 94 miles an hour. He's got plenty of company on this Mets staff with regards to the big fastball. Two and two. with a full count. Decent change up there. He turned it over a little bit, hoping Matt would swing over the top of it. Got a full count, tying around at the plate. Let's see what they decide to do. There goes Chase. Bounces it out of play. Doubled up on the changeup. If you're wearing number 47, it's a little known rule you have to throw a changeup. Well, it's a little known rule too that you got to throw between 83 and 87, no matter what. Your phone lighting up yet? Nope. Still waiting. And out of play foul. Yeah, we haven't had a trivia question, so nobody's calling us anymore. So. Mm -hmm. Now, is Tom going to be with us opening day? I assume he would be. I hope so. Hey. <laughs> and it's over the burn. And headed to the parking lot. Another full count pitch coming from Matt Kemp. Speaking of over the berm, have you seen that giant stadium they're building over here in the parking lot? Yeah, what is that? 8,000 seat covered arena for cheerleading competitions. Really? Rivera couldn't hang on. 8,000 seat yeah. arena for cheerleading. Mm -hmm. They have competitions down here all the time. They decided, you know what? They need a place to hold it and have their own space. There's a partial look at it. Huge facility. Think it could get loud in there? Whew. Finally won against Matt Kemp, an 11 pitch sequence turns into an inning ending strikeout. Cheer up, Atlanta. It's only 2 0. And Ender and Ciarte will join us when we come back.
history of the Atlanta Braves. Dale Murphy, Andrew Jones, and there's another smiling face of a gold glover. How does that feel? Feels amazing, man. I mean, I can call myself a gold glover now. It was a, that's a fun experience, and I'm hoping to get a lot of more, more of those. How did you find out when you won the gold glove? You know, my agent called me and told me, hey, I have really good news for you. I, I hope you're sitting right now. <laughs> and once he told me the news, man, it took me really like, took me a couple of weeks, weeks like to assimilate the, that I was gonna get it in a couple of days. Andrew, we've talked a lot about the Matt Kemp effect and how different this Braves offense looked after the trading deadline. We showed some numbers that you put together first half of the season, second half of the season. Was there a Matt Kemp effect on Ender Enciarte from an offensive standpoint last year? You know, I feel more like it was an effect on everybody because, I mean, once you know there's another guy in the lineup that's swinging it that well, I feel like a lot of pr uh, people take pressure out of themselves. Uh, no, you, you see, uh, you saw a lot of people trying to do too much the first half. Once he got there, he he made the job easier for a lot of us. And I mean, having him in the lineup is, I know every team will be happy to have him in the lineup and we, we're lucky to have him. I know last year was your first year in camp with the Braves, your first season in an Atlanta uniform, Ender. But talk about the difference you guys have mentally going into this season after such a good finish to last season? You know, you see a lot of confidence in the team now. Uh, the camp has been uh, very positive. I, I know I haven't been here for a long time, but it feels different. If everybody's on the same page, we are looking to win. We are having a lot of fun in on the field and outside the, the field, and we, we feel like brothers now. I mean, a lot of us have played for a while now together and we're pulling for each other. We're looking forward to start the season and hopefully start, uh, win a lot of games in that new ballpark. You mentioned that you weren't here. You were not here for good reason. You were representing Venezuela in the World Baseball Classic. That's extended spring training for everybody by about two weeks. But talk, if you would, uh, about that experience. What was that like representing your country and what was the atmosphere like playing for Venezuela in the WBC? It felt amazing. Man. A, a lot of the guys were saying that that's playoffs atmos atmosphere. I mean, once from the first pitch uh, uh, in the WBC, it was just everybody was on fire. It was uh, probably my proudest moment on a baseball field to represent my country and to be able to, to play with a lot of the guys that I always admire from the other dugout. So it was a good experience. It's not too good that we didn't win, but I mean, it, all, it always wins the best, and United States did a pretty good job. With what you were able to accomplish last year, Ender, winning the gold glove, uh, having a very good offensive year, what are some things, what are some things you'd like to work on and improve on this year? You know, I'm, I'm thinking about staying consistent. I mean, I, I've been, mentally, I feel a lot better. Last year, I struggled for the first half, and I wasn't really trusting my abilities. And once the second half started, I was just letting it go. Everything was happening. Everything was going well for me. So that's what I'm looking forward to this year, to start with the right foot and, and hopefully stay consistent the whole year. I know it's a tough, it's, it's a long season, and the more consistent I can be, in the year is going to make my teammates a lot easier for, to do their job. Guillaume out on a bang bang play at first. Nice play by Chase Darno to get Guillaume by a quarter step. Or thereabouts. Yeah. And here's LJ Mazzilli, the son of Lee Mazzilli, former big leaguer. And her last year. We didn't get to see you at your best because you had such a, a rough start. You got hurt. How are the legs? Everything's good? Everything's perfect. I feel amazing right now. And I'm working, like I say, to stay consistent physically, mentally. Uh, and I know the trainers do a great job uh, to help me stay uh, healthy. And that's, I think that's the most important part for everybody. If we can all stay consistent, a lot of good things are going to happen. L.J. Mazzilli with a deep drive to center. That'll bring home a run. Sacrifice fly will score Rene Rivera, and the Mets extend their lead. We've been talking, Ender, about the new ballpark, SunTrust Park, and how even though it's going to be your home field, there might be a little bit of a disadvantage even for the Braves because you don't know the park yet. What will be some of the things you'll look to 
figure out about SunTrust Park in such a short period of time when you guys go home? I mean, once you get there, you uh, uh, everybody was is gonna try to see what the ball does in the air and in, in the ground. And I feel like uh, on the, descent, the defensive part, you just need to take a uh, couple defensive drills. Just takes a couple BP that you you get used to it. Uh, and once you're hitting a couple of bats, I know you're gonna get used to it. It's like that. I mean, it's like when I got traded, I didn't have a whole like uh, at bats at Turner Field and. Since the first game, I was feeling comfortable. So it, sometimes it, it can take a little while, but uh, we are all looking forward for that new ballpark. I know it's going to be a lot of fun for the fans and hopefully for us too, because we uh, we are very excited for the team we have and the coaching staff, everybody. And I mean, it's just a matter of one week to start playing games. And you figure to have big crowds every night too, huh? Yeah, I mean, hopefully. Yeah, I know that's. Uh, everybody wants to play with a big crowd. I mean, if the fans are going to the games, the the adrenaline gets higher. Everybody wants to start running at the 200 percent. So <laughs> it's always going to be good to have them visiting often. John Moore, a little pop into shallow center. That'll take care of the Mets who cash in a leadoff walk. Ender, welcome back to camp. Can't wait to get started. Congrats on a great year. Let's have some fun this year. Thank you, guys. The great yeah. Ender in CRJ, as my partner would say. He's a gold glover, you know. back join us for opening week Friday April 14th through Thursday April 20th the Padres and the Nationals are coming to town Tom Glavin will join us for that Nationals series as we debut at SunTrust Park go to Braves.com slash tickets today and get your seats now three nothing New York as we've hit the seventh inning stretch Hansel Robles back out there for the Mets he'll face Marquecas Suzuki and then Rio Ruiz. One defensive change for New York. Kevin Plawecki is behind the plate. R.A. Dickey started for the Braves. Six innings, seven hits, couple of runs, three strikeouts. He's allowed two of the three runs. They came in the first. Talked about this a little bit last year about Nick's bat and how unique it is, at least to me. He has one of the biggest knobs at the bottom of his bat that I've ever seen, which is a nice place to rest your hand when you're down on the bottom of the bat. It's bigger around than most. That caught a corner. A ball and two strikes. One, two. Well, Nick continues to make progress from the next surgery. He's gotten stronger and stronger. Remember the first year for Atlanta, 2015. We talked about that before the game with Terry Collins. It was no sure thing that he was going to make the opening day roster. 
there he was in Miami on opening day, and I think he gave the Braves the game-winning hit. Mm -hmm. Hit 296 that year with three homers. Last year, hit 269. Hit 13 homers and drove in 89 runs. Yeah, that was his lowest batting average of his career. That's why I'm confident that it, it'll be a much better average this year. And that's not even to suggest that he had an off year because he did drive in 89 runs. 32 of those RBIs came with two outs. That does not surprise me. Rip toward first. Nick will be retired. Four out number one. I think something that'll help Nick too, as you might recall, as the Braves were struggling trying to put a jigsaw puzzle together without a, a key. Mark Akis was batting everywhere in the lineup. Once Atlanta got Matt Kemp, he was batting behind Freddie Freeman. Well, especially after uh, Ender got hurt, pulled that hamstring, and was out of the lineup. Uh, Malik Smith got hurt. He couldn't lead off. You know, there weren't very many nominees to be the leadoff man, and Nick had let off before with Baltimore. So a lot of his time was in the leadoff spot. And so obviously moving in the, in the lineup behind Freeman and Kemp, as often as they were on base, tons of RBI chances for <laughs> Nick Markakis, and more often than not, he came through. So that 3 4 5 trio looks to be, on paper, pretty salty. As Kurt Suzuki takes his third turn. He's hit to a double play and he's single. This one skied toward left. And that'll be caught by Mora in left center. And Suzuki's out number two. Eric O'Flaherty's going in the Braves pen. Looks like Eric's going to come on and pitch the eighth. Be anxious to see him work. And here is. Rio Ruiz talked about Rio's big league debut in our first telecast the other night. It was September 18th. You might recall the Braves were playing in a rain soaked game and Ruiz was announced as a pinch hitter. And just as he made his way to the plate umpire stopped play for a second time. The game was suspended washed out and Rio had to wait 10 more days before he got a chance to get back in the lineup. He got his first big league hit, a triple against the Phillies. The cool part of the story is Rio Ruiz, as a youngster, promised his dad that if he ever got to the big leagues, he'd give his dad the ball from his first major league hit. And this Christmas, he surprised his dad with his uniform, the ball, and the lineup card as his oh, Christmas gift. So a great, great moment for the Ruiz family. We head to the eighth inning. All Mets, 3-0. Three nothing Mets says we've completed seven in Orlando. Joe Simpson, Chip Carey, and the rest of our Fox Sports crew with you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Time for our SunTrust Confidence Starts Here feature. Baseball America's 
top farm system rankings. Atlanta Braves on top, edging out the New York Yankees. And boy, is it loaded with pitching, folks. Talking to John Scherholz today before the ball game, and he was talking about some of the things Bobby Cox had said about the guys he was watching on the backfield and Bobby's eyes popping out and raving about these players that are coming through the pipeline. I saw Bobby before the game at breakfast today and he said it's just like the old days. Isn't that great? Yep. Speaking of old days. Eric O'Flaherty if he finds some form from just a few years ago when he was one of the best set up men especially left handed in the game. What a return it will be for him. Here it is. Eric has found a little more life on his fastball, but more importantly, he's found the sinker again. Yeah, he's he's bumping it up around 91 at times, which is not always good for a sinker baller. But where that's translated for him is in nine appearances. Five times he struck out two batters out of those nine appearances, and has struck out at least one batter in all nine. Would you take 14 strikeouts in nine and two-thirds innings in the spring? Yeah, and only two walks. Long throw and an infield hit for Ty Keller. 88 hopper up the middle. And that's how the Mets eighth starts. Yeah, Eric, nine and two-thirds innings coming in, seven hits, only two earned runs. He's walked two batters and struck out 14. And as things stand now, I would assume that it would be a shock if Eric didn't make this. Uh, agreed. Okay. His last three outings, three innings, one hit, no runs, four walks, and five strikeouts. Well, let's see if he can calm down Michael Conforto, who's had another big day at the plate. He's homered, singled, and struck out. That's of hit 34 home runs this spring. Conforto's hit three of them. Last year they set a team record with 218 homers. And remember this is a Mets club that had Cespedes miss time. They had Duda miss time. They had David Wright miss time. Three and oh, why not? Backing away. Dickie Chapman and O'Flaherty, the three Braves pitchers so far today. Montero and Robles are the Mets hurlers. And that's in the dirt ball four, so an infield hit and a walk. New York has two on with nobody else. Lots of changes for Atlanta. Here's the defense going into the eighth. Adam Walker, Connor Lean in center. Mel Rojas Jr. is in right. Ruiz, Peterson, Darno, Tui Asasopo, and Suzuki around the horn and behind the plate. Head to Port St. Lucie tomorrow. Matt Whistler will start for Atlanta. Matt Harvey will pitch for the Mets. And then we're back with you Monday night. The Braves will face the Tigers again. And we'll get our first look at Mike Fultonevich this spring. Tigers have not yet announced their starter. Popped up, foul ground, and headed for the seats. What is that about two and a half hours over to Port St. Lucie? Thereabouts, yeah. Another you, short road trip. Well, uh, you can get there faster than you can get to downtown Orlando from Disney. Uh, so the Braves have that going for them. Good point. Here we go. 
2 and 2. Can you imagine if Orlando was like Phoenix, where there were a lot of teams, you know, in and around the perimeter and had to <laughs> get from one park to the other on the other side of Orlando? Good luck. <laughs> Game postponed. Man, traffic. Two balls, two strikes. And a chopper toward third. There's one. Double clutch throw to second in time. Might have had a chance for the around the horn triple play, but it took a little too long to develop. So Conforto rolls into the double play, or excuse me, Flores rolls into the double play. He's at first with two out. And another chance for T.J. Rivera. Rivera is a native New Yorker. He is born and raised in the Bronx. And former Met, Mackie Sasser, baseball coach at Wallace Community College, saw T.J. Rivera playing baseball at Troy University and recommended him to the Mets, and here he is. All he did last year, as I mentioned, was win the Pacific Coast League batting title. He won the batting title, and Conforto hit 400. The Las Vegas team had a pretty good lineup. Yeah. No balls and a strike. As we've reached three o'clock in Orlando. Ball clocked at 91 for Eric. Good sign, isn't it? Ball's moving all over the place. Rivera late, but he fought it off. Still a ball and two strikes. Jace Peterson is going to lead off the Atlanta eighth. Center Connor Lean drifts back, plenty of room, makes the play. And Eric O'Flaherty a scoreless top of the eighth.
soon it's an April like never before with the Braves Hawks and now Atlanta United it's April in the ATL and Fox Sports South and Fox Sports Southeast have nonstop coverage all month long April in the ATL presented by Cook's Pest Control. Yes, yeah, cool about having the new soccer team fans are really turning out for them. Wonderful. Wish him a lot of luck. Here's one of the changes for the Mets in the eighth. Patrick Biondi, Champ Stewart takes over in center. And Josh Edgen, we've seen him before, is on in relief. Side arming sinker baller. Jace Peterson pops the first one up to the left side and he's retired for the first out. Third base umpire Jerry Lane all over that way to hustle. Had to turn around. That's spring training for the umpires too you know. And here's Adam Walker. Adam had the game winner here the other night. Base hit in the bottom of the ninth inning to send the Braves off to a win against the Tigers. Big and strong, a lot of power numbers in the minor leagues. To third. And the long toss across in time. Two out. Here's Connor Lean. He's from Orlando. Went to Olympia High School. It's about seven miles from Walt Disney World over near Isleworth and Bay Hill. He had a good year going for the Braves in the minor leagues last year before a fractured wrist. Cost him about 70 games or so. It's a chance to play for friends and family in his hometown. That's always fun in the spring. That's nice. Check swing roller right back to Edgen. And it's an easy eight for the Mets. Left hand. The York's tossing a shot out at the Braves. We go to the ninth.
Atlanta Braves Spring Training Baseball is brought to you by Landmark Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, and SunTrust. We head to the ninth inning, 3-0 New York. Chaz Rowe checks in. He's the third reliever, fourth pitcher of the day for the Braves. We'll tell you about his spring in a moment. As you see, Sean Kazmar is in to play shortstop. Rowe picked up from Baltimore late in the season. Did a good job. Good ERA. Nasty slider. If he's got that working. He's going to have a good day. This spring, he's had two very good outings and three very rough outings in relief. As Patrick Biondi's the Mets leadoff man. That slider slud. Yeah, it had a little too much bite on it. Yeah. But these are important outings for guys like Kevin Chapman and Chaz Rowe. Their opportunities are dwindling. There's only about a week left in spring training, and there are still jobs to be won in middle relief for this yeah. ball club. Yeah, nothing's nailed down there yet. I mean, outside of Jim Johnson, of course, Erodis Biscaino, uh, Ian Kroll, three guys you know are going to be there. Keys this time of spring. You've had time to kind of work out some of the mechanical kinks if you're a pitcher. Chip, the throw strikes. You got. You can't go out and walk guys and expect to get the attention of the staff. And he's gone three and two to beyond it. Let's see. Looking at Chaz's game by game line. Didn't retire a batter in his first outing as he takes care of Biondi with a wicked slider. All right, you throw that one out. First outing in February, as a matter of fact. Kevin Ploiecki's going to hit. Two runs, three hits in an inning against the Red Sox. A scoreless inning against the Mets. One unearned run against the Tigers on March 15th. But his last two outings, two innings, four hits, two runs, no walks, three strikeouts. Had a good start to the ninth inning with a strikeout of Biondi. And you can see the break from where we sit. Yep. When you're especially throwing it at a right-handed hitter and making them freeze and have it come across. <laughs> then the fastball at 91. The Braves and Mets will meet in the final Florida game in spring training. That's on the 29th. The Mets originally had a game scheduled at West Point, New York. But as Terry Collins told us before the game, they had about 70 feet of snow, so <laughs> couldn't get the field ready. So that game's been rescheduled. In New York, as Rowe takes care of another right-handed hitter, that's an encouraging sign. Ploiecki's caught looking, two out. Flinch. And a strike, and he knew it. The Braves, as you know, will wrap up the spring schedule against the Yankees on the 31st at SunTrust Park. And we'll find our way to New York. Kazbar with a throw off the bag, but Tuyas Sopo with a nice play to catch it and tag the runner sprinting by to retire the side. Perfect inning for Chaz Rowe with a couple of strikeouts. We'll see what the Braves can do in their last turn. 3 0 headed to the bottom of the ninth.
regular season play and our first games at SunTrust Park. It opens up on the 14th of April. The most technologically advanced stadium in the country. The Battery of Atlanta and all its amenities. Always exciting to move into a new ballpark. You were with the Braves when they moved across from Fulton County Stadium to Turner Field. What was that like? I think because it was such a short hop across the street, it didn't seem like that major a move, that big a move, even though it was a beautiful ballpark to move into from old Atlanta Fort County Stadium. Don't get me wrong. And all the amenities. Chase Darno pops one up. Paul Sewald is the new Mets pitcher, a closer for them at AAA, and he's had an impressive spring. But we thought the center field plaza was something. You know, we thought, wow, that's different. Now there's kind of entertainment out there, restaurants and all that. That was a big deal. Other ballparks copied it, like Philadelphia. Well, this is major. I mean, this is a move out to Cobb County, first of all. But there's a city built around it. There's apartments, com uh, condos, restaurants, theaters, bowling, the... Uh, the Roxy, the Roxy venue, uh, it's incredible. It, it's, it's just nothing like it. Kind of funny how baseball goes full circle, doesn't it? Because when you think of the great old ballparks, Wrigley Field and Fenway Park, they too were built in the middle of neighborhoods, shops, bars, yeah. restaurants. Now here we are over 100 years later and returning to it. It's Tui Asasopo. It's one deep to left, but the wind will knock that down to out. In those days, the ballpark was forced to conform to the neighborhood this one has a neighborhood conforming to the ballpark, and it's awesome. So last hope for the Braves is Balbino Fuenmior. Saw him hit a home run against the Cardinals this spring. We'll have to put a charge in one to turn that wind around today. Big dude. Good cut. Albino out of Valencia, Venezuela. Originally signed by the Blue Jays. He's played in Lansing, Vancouver. He's played in the Independent League for two years. Last year he was at Omaha. We hit 291. He had a good cut. Don't forget to join us on. Friday the 31st at 5.30 Eastern. Braves live. Welcome home. Then at 7.30, it's the Braves and Yankees. The very first game played at SunTrust Park. Join us on Fox Sports South and Fox Sports Go. 5.30 next Friday evening. Raise it down to their last strike. One and two. And that's going to do it. The Mets shot out Atlanta three to nothing. They got two runs in the first. And that's all Rafael Montero and their bullpen needed as Terry Collins' crew beats R.A. Dickey and Atlanta by a final of three nothing. We'll recap it for you from Disney right after this.